Welcome everyone. Good afternoon and welcome to the NJACAC um, Learning Outside of the Classroom webinar. I just have a few housekeeping items before we get started just so you know what to expect from the webinar. Um, so you can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions out to the presenters at any time. Um, so just make sure you click that Q&A right at the bottom. Your camera and microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you in this session. Um, this is one of many different sessions that we have happening at NJACAC, so be sure to check out the full schedule at njacac.org. Um, this presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week at that same website site njacac.org um, and now we'll get started so I'm like I'd like to turn it over to our presenters and they'll get it started for you perfect thank you so much for that introduction we're all extremely excited to be here uh, today Thank you all for joining us, whether uh, you're at your house or you're somewhere else. We're, we're all adjusting to this new world, but we're very excited that you're here today. Um, and, and welcome again to Learning Outside of the Classroom. Uh, we're all just going to go around really quick, give you a brief introduction, um, you know, our name, our title, and what school we're from. Um, and then I'll just give a little, um, you know, insight into what you can expect today. Uh, so my name is Bryce Wender. I am one of the admissions counselors at Pennsylvania uh, College of Technology. Uh, hi everyone, my name is Lauren Krauss. I'm an admissions counselor at Lycoming College. Um, we're located in Williamsport, Pennsylvania, neighbors of Pennsylvania College of Technology. Hi everyone, my name is Michaela Mitchell, Mitchell and I'm an admissions counselor at Arcadia University in Glenside, PA, which is right outside of uh, the city of brotherly love itself, Philadelphia. Thank you for those introductions. Um, so learning outside the classroom today, we, we all came together um, because we all really think that there's a lot of value in uh, you know, learning outside of the classroom. It's really great to get an awesome educational experience while you're at any college. Um, but a, a big piece of learning in college is, is finding things to do outside of the classroom so you can not only make yourself um, you know, a better individual, but to you know, make you a, a well-rounded educational experience. Um, at the college as well. Um, so we're all gonna just talk about uh, some things today. We're gonna talk a little bit about our colleges um, and kind of what we value um, as some uh, learning outside of the classroom opportunities. So I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna kick things off with Arcadia University. All right, so like I said, we are Arcadia University right outside of uh, Philadelphia. And we're a smaller school, so average 2,100 students. Um, so we really uh, strive on that one-to-one -one connection with your professors and the people around you. Um, and we definitely have uh, lots of things for students to study and kind of get involved in. Um, over 65 fields of study, so a lot of mixing and matching, um, a lot of opportunities for you to gain on top of that with our, our other opportunities outside of the classroom as well. So one of the amazing things that Arcadia is uh, very well known for um, and things that you'll see at a lot of other colleges as well is study abroad. Um, and how our study abroad is shaped is a lot different um, from school to school, uh, but we offer many opportunities for you to go as short as one week, as long as a full year, um, and, and even opportunities for you to go within your first uh, within your first year. So um, those first year opportunities are our uh, first year study abroad program, also known as FISI, um, in our spring preview where students get a chance um, in spring preview to take a two credit course and go learn somewhere like Tuscany, Italy and learn about the food, food cultures for a full week during spring break or uh, go to Vietnam or uh, Costa Rica and London and different opportunities like that. Um, for our FISI and SISI, so first year and second year study abroad, it is a full semester within your spring semester of your freshman year or fall or spring in your uh, sophomore year for you to 
be in London or um, in Barcelona, uh, Cape Town, South Africa, these other places for you to learn about the culture and take your entire semester on um, in a different country and kind of learn as you go. Um, and then of course we have some other really amazing programs that are really unique to Arcadia, uh, like our global field study program, which is a shortened version of um, our, our full semester program where students get to take a, a, a three credit class and really get a chance to learn about an area for about a week to three weeks. Um, and those are normally reserved for our sophomore, juniors and seniors. Um, but one of my absolute favorite things that students get to do is our internships um, and summers abroad. So the internships are absolutely phenomenal. Um, and depending on what major you are depends on what's available for you. So for our global media majors, they have a chance to work on a reality TV set in Australia. For our pre-law students, we have opportunities for you to work with Parliament. Um, in London or in Australia or in New Zealand. So there's lots of different opportunities for students to kind of uh, get those real world experiences through study abroad and see the different opportunities that we have here to offer. So a few uh, co-curricular programs or um, just things that you can do outside of the classroom um, is we, we very much so focus on internship and jobs, which you heard me briefly talk about in the last slide, um, our scholars programs where students get to work with a cohort and our fellowship and research programs as well. Um, because we're so close to Philly, students get a chance to work with Intern Philly um, and different uh, local partnerships that we have. We work with over 205 different businesses across the Eastern Seaboard um, and across the world as well. So students get a chance to either learn and be a part of internships within Philadelphia or the local community at large. Um, but even uh, we also use a platform called Handshake, with, which is a lot of which is what a lot of colleges use um, to kind of get students prepared for the next steps of life and apply to different internships and jobs and things of that nature. For our scholars program, um, we do have uh, four separate opportunity for students uh, to kind of get involved. Um, our College to Career Scholars is just a program based um, with a small cohort each year where we teach you how to be a, a better applicant, be um, a, a better employee, and show you how to write your resume, how to um, get dressed for your interviews, you know, uh, work in a team setting and different things of that nature. Um, and we accept students from their, uh, their freshman application. So this is a full year program as the rest of these are. Um, another one is our civic scholars program, which is for the students that are pretty interested in helping the world and making it a better place. They fully focus on um, social change and how to improve our community and the world in PA uh, from just their desk at school or with their cohort and finding new and inventive ways to uh, define themselves and define our world. Um, and then of course we have our Honors and Global Scholars Program. So our Honors Program is just, um, you know, typical for the students that are more higher, um, uh, higher, learning students and things of that nature, but we take a twist on it. So it's not just, oh, you get to apply for uh, classes early and things like that, but we uh, have classes that you're able to take to kind of enhance the other, uh, um, the other pieces of you being an exceptional learner. So how to work better in groups, how to take an idea and run with it, um, uh, working uh, on an independent project and things of that nature, we really want to hone the other skills outside of your generic book learning smarts to make sure that you are a well-rounded individual. Um, and our global scholars are is just a fancy term for our lovely study abroad students that uh, continue to go abroad. So students that are uh, taking a part of our international business or international relations and things like that um, uh, 
programs so students get to see the world a little bit more than the rest of us. And then finally, our fellowship programs and research opportunities. Our SAJE fellowship is a really amazing fellowship for students who are interested in being uh, teachers and it's focused on Philadelphia and the Philadelphia community at large and how we can improve uh, the inner city classroom and make it a better way. So it's a great way for you to get a little bit of money for college, but you um, kind of learn from these different professors and teachers on how to make a better positive learning experience for all the students involved and making sure that, you know, uh, inner city youth are not left out of the conversation when we're talking about education improvement. Um, and it's a great four year program and it even comes with a job at the end. So uh, you will end up working for uh, the Philadelphia uh, school district and really get a chance to work with amazing students along the way as you kind of prepare for those different steps. And then uh, finally, um, our STEM uh, research abroad, which is a huge thing for a lot of our students who are interested in bio, psychology, and different things of that nature. You actually get to go to over 15 different countries, depending on what you're interested in. And based off of your major and everything else, you get to spend an entire summer doing research and learning different things and meeting different people from all across the globe that are there to do the same thing as you are. Um, one of the most popular ones that we see uh, for our conservation biology students is going to um, the coast of uh, New Zealand and working on uh, reef projects and figuring out how to uh, make that make it better and improve our ocean systems and things of that nature. And that's just a little bit about the programs and opportunities that we have uniquely at Arcadia. Thank you for that. That was great. So um, thank you, Lauren, in the beginning for saying uh, we're, we're right next to each other. Um, so Pennsylvania College of Technology, like Lauren said, is located in uh, Williamsport, Pennsylvania, which is um, center of the state. It's right next to the uh, Little League World Series, if you've heard of that or if you've been there. Um, if you haven't, definitely check that out. But from New Jersey, I'd say we're, we're typically a couple hours away, depending on what part of New Jersey um, you live in. Very easily accessible, though. Um, to Williamsport, certainly. Um, so just a little bit about Penn College. Uh, we are a Penn State affiliate school. Um, so essentially, they, they really back us and what we do here in our hands-on um, applied technology education. So you're going to hear me talk about that a couple of times, that hands-on applied technology education, because uh, it's really what we do here, and it's, it's really how our students learn. Um, so just a little bit about the population of the school. Uh, we have about 5,000 students here at the college. Um, studying over 100 different programs, anything ranging from nursing to welding um, to baking, business, um, anything like that. Um, and our students can get certificate programs here. They can get their associate degrees, uh, bachelor's degree, and then we also have uh, two programs that offer a master's uh, degree as well. So really, uh, at Penn College, we really take, um, you know, learning outside of the classroom seriously because a lot of what we do at Penn College is outside of the classroom. So we have these amazing hands-on learning environments um, and labs on our campus. We have over 150 of them spread throughout campus. Um, really, all of our programs have a lab space that you can learn in, um, as well as some of them even have a, a couple additional ones as well. So what that really means is that you're, you're not really sitting at Penn College in a classroom learning per se in a traditional manner. You're going to be using your hands and doing, um, you know, what you're going to be doing out in the industry. Um, because at the end of the day, we want you to be prepared um, to, to go out there. We don't want you working with uh, equipment, you know, from 30, 40 years ago. We want you learning in the best lab space possible. And, and really what allows us to do that um, is, is one, we invest a, a large amount of, of money into making sure those facilities are extremely up to date so you can uh, learn that way. And then we also have a lot of really great industry partnerships that allow us to keep those labs uh, state of the art. Some of them are Caterpillar is a big one for us, uh, Volvo is another one, um, to name a couple. Um, but really, you know, learning outside of the classroom, like I said, that's that's really what our students do full time here. And, and they really do that through that hands-on learning environment that, that we love to talk about here at the college. 
So another really big thing that we like to talk about um, in terms of students learning outside of the classroom are uh, their work-based learning opportunities or your internships and your global experiences. So first I'm going to touch on the internship experience. Um, internships, no matter what college you go to um, or university, they will greatly, greatly impact you as a student as well as uh, building your professional network. It's extremely important to make those connections because it can oftentimes uh, lead to a full-time job and like I said it can it can definitely create that that pipeline and those relationships for you. Um, I'm sure my colleagues here will, will fully throw their support behind that. So how exactly does Penn College do it? Well a lot of our programs they have built-in internships right in the curriculum so most of the time you don't have to go out and find one. We have our advisors, we have our faculty members helping you along the way to get those dream internships. Um, although a lot of our programs have one internship, some of them even require two or three internships. So that way you're building that resume along the way and, and you're really learning outside that classroom um, in that real world setting, um, using your hands on um, you know, experience like I was talking about. Um, so that's really a big thing that we believe in here. Now, you may be asking, well, what if my program doesn't require an internship? Well, you know, certainly we, we do have those situations and our faculty and staff, um, they're, they're terrific people, terrific instructors, but a lot of them are still really plugged in to their industry still. So, you know, if you want to get an internship at John Deere, for example, um, you know, we have people that, that have those connections there and they can help you get that dream internship. Because at the end of the day, our main goal is for you to get that dream job and, you know, that internship experience will help you get that dream job and, and get that best experience possible. Now, the other aspect I want to talk about is global experiences, uh, similar to Arcadia. You can go to most colleges and you're going to find these amazing global experiences. And it's something you should really take advantage of um, if you're comfortable with it or if you're not a, you know, comfortable with it. Um, believe me, I don't think I would be somebody that would necessarily sign up to, to go overseas, but I can tell you for a fact that I don't know anybody who uh, has done it and has regretted it. Everybody I've talked to who has, has done a global experience or a study abroad program has truly loved it because, you know, it really does expand your, your knowledge. You're learning not just in that classroom space, that's very important, but going overseas or to a different country and learning their culture and their environment and how they do something is extremely beneficial, not only for your educational experience, uh, but for, you know, your life experience as well. Now, unique to Penn College, you know, we do have semester-long trips. We have a couple of, uh, you know, short-term trips, could be a week, could be a couple of days. Um, you know, we, of course, we have those experiences that you can do just for general education courses, um, but we do have some program-specific courses as well. Uh, so, for example, some of our um, baking and pastry students, they get the opportunity to uh, go to Italy or go to France and they can kind of see the culture there, see the different food, go to different restaurants and get that experience. We also have students here, you can actually see in the picture, um, they were automotive students in Italy who got to go over there and tour different car facilities and learn about how car manufacturing overseas is different from car manufacturing in the United States. Um, they got to really see the process and, you know, besides learning, um, you know, obviously that's what you're over there to do. You're over there to learn. But my goodness, the, the global experience and, and the opportunity you get to just embrace yourself in the culture, it's so valuable, like I said, not only to that educational portion, but to, to creating the best person you can possibly be. It's a, it's a big um, you know, piece of that puzzle. So um, big takeaways, certainly from Penn College, is take advantage of the internships. That gives you an awesome, awesome um, thing for your resume and can give you that great experience. Um, definitely take advantage of global opportunities um, and, and just, um, you know, make sure you're, you're comfortable learning in the environment that, that you're in, because that can certainly impact, um, you know, how you learn and, and what you get away from that experience. Yeah, I, I can't echo the both of my colleagues enough. I think the biggest piece that I think we're all hoping that you guys get out of this is that, um, the importance is not only just learning in the classroom. So a lot of you are in your search process and that can look very different to the different wants and needs that you may have. Um, but I think as higher ed professionals, we're really hoping that you kind of hear the importance of what you're getting in the classroom and the opportunities that 
any college or university that you're looking at can also provide to you. I think resume has been thrown out there a lot. And so I think that that's something else to kind of keep in mind. Um, during your four, five, seven, however many years you're going to school, whether it's for bachelor, master's and continuing ed, um, just know that there's gonna be the work that you have to do outside the classroom as well. Um, and I think all of us have highlighted different aspects in that and Lycoming College is very similar in those um, aspects as well. And some things I wanted to point out um, that I mentioned earlier, just as Bryce said, we are neighbors to Pennsylvania College of Technology. So we are in Williamsport, Pennsylvania, just down the road. Um, so I don't want to echo everything that he just said because he painted Williamsport in such a great manner. Um, but one of the things I want to point out is we are a liberal arts private institution. Um, we are a smaller institution, so we have about 1,200 students on campus. Um, our faculty to student ratio is 12 to 1. And one of the things that um, we're really proud of here is since we are an undergraduate institution, um, our students are at the front line with their faculty members. And so part of some of our learning outside of the classroom is really our students getting involved in research or going to conferences and presenting on what they're working on in the classroom as well as whatever their faculty member is working on within the field. Um, our faculty have some of the highest degrees within their field as high as they can go and are continuing some of that research and our students really get to be involved in that. Um, so some other pieces that I wanted to highlight with our institution is all of our students are required to um, have an enhanced academic experience, which I'll talk about a little bit further. Um, and so pieces of that happens is that our students do actually get a career advisor as well as an academic advisor. Um, so if you're a student that is not sure of a major to take, um, most colleges and universities will kind of help you through that process. But here specifically at Lycoming College, um, that career advisor really works with you within your first year to really determine how to reach that end goal you may have. Like you might have a huge vision that you know that you want to obtain in your career, but you're not sure the steps to get there. Um, and so your career advisor here at Lycoming College would really make sure that they help you get there. Um, we do offer um, 43 majors and have a, about 66 minors um, and those uh, are really handmade for the students and what they're looking to obtain. Um, so some of our students double major, we have a couple students that triple major with different minors and again that, that really comes down to the support and the people in your corner to determine what you're looking for. Thanks, Bryce. <laughs> um, so I kind of already mentioned the career advisor. Um, that individual actually starts working with you the summer before you start school here at Lycoming College. Um, so when you come in the summer for orientation, you're already um, starting and creating that relationship and conversation with your career advisor to really, again, adapt the career and the education that you want to get to obtain those goals that you kind of had set in mind. Um, after college, we kind of talked a lot about resume. Um, there's a big part of what you do in college that really helps you get the job. Unfortunately, colleges and universities don't directly hand you a job when you walk across the stage. Um, and so a lot of it really comes down to what you're willing to put into it. And so as my colleagues mentioned, getting involved in internships, getting involved in your field as soon as possible, and as early as possible is really important. Um, but in your college search, really looking at what are some of the networking opportunities that that college has that you are interested in. Um, and so with our Center for Enhanced Academic Experiences, we do have those career advisors who are helping you write your resume, working on cover letters. Um, we have a career closet so individuals um, can go and get the clothes that they may need if they're unable to afford them to prepare for interviews um, and anything like that. The office is really there to support our students. And the biggest thing here is you as a student looking at colleges and universities, you have limitless opportunities on where you can go. Um, some specifics here at Lycoming College is we are pretty proud of our internship um, experiences. One example that we have is Williamsport Summer Experiences, so we call it WISE Internship Experiences. It's actually a 10-week paid internship with specific internship opportunities for various different majors or opportunities right here in Williamsport. Um, and we also provide on-campus housing during that time. Uh, so if students are struggling to find internships back at home, et cetera, we're able to kind of provide that for them. Another one that we have is actually our Clearwater Institute. 
Um, we've been working on understanding and growing and researching our waterways um, here in Pennsylvania and our Clean Water Institute is a part of that and it's a summer field internship research project for our students. We also um, have different opportunities, opportunities with other partnership programs um, throughout the nation. Um, we have one in Washington working with American universities semester program and internships in the, na um, the national capital. Um, another one that we're really proud of is our Warrior Coffee project. So here on, on our campus, uh, we do have our own homemade, homegrown coffee. Um, it's actually from the Dominican Republic and it's a debt started through a political science professor who is still here and knew nothing about agriculture. Um, however, built this program in the Dominican Republic and was able to now take students there to kind of grow within that. Um, and so students can, we have multiple different um, global experiences in the Dominican Republic for that. Um, as also we have coffee that's great to drink here on campus. Um, so I think that, that kind of wraps us up on some of the opportunities that we uh, discuss. I don't know if anyone has any questions. we give people some time here to, to type in any questions thank you um, both for for presenting today um, certainly i'm going to make a plug for everyone um, all of you every college you know we're offering visit opportunities certainly you can find all of them on our websites they're, they're pretty easy to find um, so definitely check out those opportunities um, we, we definitely understand it might not be the easiest uh, to to get here right now but certainly if you can please, you know, stop in our colleges, you know, visit us. We, we'd love to talk to you, love to see if, you know, you're the right fit for us. Um, and the other plug too is certainly if you're interested, if you liked what you heard from one of us today, you know, fill out our applications. We, like I said, we love to, to talk to students, um, you know, answer those questions and, and make sure we're, we're finding the right fit for you. I just wanted to add to because um, you all are in the search process. Another thing that you can start, you know, kind of looking and researching with colleges and universities is really their connection to alumni. Um, and I think all three of us can really attest to what that might look like different on all three of our campuses. Um, but a big part of understanding and building your resume and all those kind of things for your career development is also building your network. And one of the great aspects of attending a college and university is that there's endless networks that has been created over the years that the college or university has been in place. Um, and so I know Bryce talked about it with internship opportunities of kind of think of one and if they have an alumni there, they can connect you to it. That's, that's across the board. Um, but that's another big piece that you can kind of determine how involved alumni are on colleges campuses and kind of really see um, those opportunities for students as well. Just another kind of plug in general. I don't see any questions coming in, but one last plug is I'm sure we all have information sessions. Um, so if you want to hear more about, you know, Pennsylvania College of Technology, like Cumming College or Katie University, please, you know, feel free to sign up for our information sessions. You'll hear a little bit more about the college get the chance to uh, ask us any questions in those sessions. Um, and of course, if you think of any questions, um, you know, please feel free to reach out to our admissions offices. Um, we'll, we'll be more than happy to talk with you, talk with your family, um, see if it's the right fit for you, um, and, and hopefully you know, get you on campus, visit, and, and make you a, a future student in one of our schools. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, panelists. This was such useful information for our students to learn. Um, so I am just going to go through a couple more housekeeping items before we finish up today. If students or families, you have any questions while I finish up with this, feel free to drop them in the Q&A and our panelists will definitely answer them before we close out today. Uh, 
Okay, so just a couple more things. Um, thanks again for joining us. When you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick uh, four question survey. So we'd love to get any feedback that you can provide for our panelists so that they can improve any sessions that they have in the future. Um, also, this was, like I mentioned before, just one of many sessions being hosted. So be sure to sign up for any additional ses sessions at njacac.org. Um, in about a week, you'll be able to find this session recording as well as the other sessions recordings um, at again njacac.org um, so if you want to relive the awesome lessons that you learned from the panelists or if you want to share this with anyone who wasn't able to attend today you can certainly do so so um, I don't see any other questions popping up in the Q&A so I will take that as you learn so much today that you don't need to ask anymore um, so thanks again for joining us and we'll see you at another session soon